first guest on the list is Omega Riley. Are you there? Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Hey, um, let me ask you, how many times is it? I think you've been on the podcast probably like six times or something, haven't you? Uh, I think today is my third, though. I did call in when you are on uh, someone really? else's show once. Oh, man. Yeah. I thought it was more than that. That's we, awesome. We just end up talking a lot. <laughs> right? Apparently so. That's pretty cool. Well, thank you for coming back on. Um, yeah, of course, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, you're a patron, and that's why you get kicked to the top of the list, I guess, right? Yeah, I always forget that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's cool. So, anyway um just to recap for the audience I, you're a jehovah's or you're an ex jehovah's witness right yeah ex jehovah's witness ha- went to my last meeting in 2015 really your last meeting in 2015 um was that like were you still kind of going regularly or was it kind of sporadic by the time you went to your last one it wasn't my choice. I had really entirely emotionally fallen out of everything by about 2013 probably. Mm. But my mom still forced me to go to everything through 2014, and then in um, 2015 it was my last convention. Right. Interesting. I actually heard that um, somebody I work with is a Jehovah's Witness, and he messaged me like I, yesterday, and he was like, "Hey, I'm at a Jehovah's Witness convention. He doesn't know anything about me or what I do uh, outside right. of the software stuff I do for him." It's so funny. He's like, "Oh, that sounds like fun." But anyways, <laughs> like fun. Yeah. Like Should we fun. give some context as to what the convention is for everyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aware? What was it like when you went to the last convention? Like, what did you do? Tell me about it. I mean, the last one I went to, I believe it was the one that they held in the Kingdom over in Seattle. Mm. And I think it was like an 11,000 person turnout, something like That's that. huge. Oh, it was incredible. They normally over here, they host them in the Tacoma Dome and we get uh, normally like 3,000 people. And then they have a um, couple of weeks that they do it. That is nuts. Yeah, I, I think that, like, I don't want to out myself where I live, but people know I live in West Virginia. So I'll just say that I had conventions at, at various times in Columbus, Ohio, and in the capital of West Virginia, Charleston, uh, at, at points in my life. I think we got, like, 3,000, 4,000 at the district convention, which is the three-day convention, the big one every year. But I lived in Atlanta, Georgia for a while. We got 10,000 at that one. It was so crazy. Let me ask you this. When you were going to the conventions when you were little, did you ever, did you have the, like the vendors outside selling like little fans and binoculars and stuff? Maybe. I No, I never actually put it together, but I noticed that everyone, like everyone there had like a little like paper fan or something, one of those little tiny motor things yeah going so maybe they were selling them nearby was that or they just went and picked them up at the dollar store i know we did that once or twice oh man i remember like i lived in connecticut for a while and we had our district conventions when i was like six seven eight years old in rhode island and there was like this giant american flag hanging from the ceiling of this uh convention center and they could not take it down they couldn't remove it and it was the only convention center that would fit everybody in that area so they had no choice but to hold it there it was crazy (laughs) that's funny yeah i could not even believe it was like you know such a scandal but outside of that convention they had vendors that were selling little motorized fans and binoculars and i just it was like going on vacation almost like we'd get a hotel and we, you know, there'd be like a swimming pool there. We'd get the hotel for like three days and we'd have these little fans. It was actually fun. Like I honestly kind of enjoyed going to the conventions at the time. I didn't like sitting there through the boring sermons all day, but it was oh. kind of an entertaining trip, you know? Oh, I totally understand that. I know it was one of the, um, one of the few times I got to see my extended family because, Oh my God, my entire family tree is hitting it, and mm. now I just don't talk to anyone. But really? Are they all Jehovah's Witness? Um, all on my mom's side, yeah. Uh, pretty much everyone I can immediately think of was. I have like a couple of aunts and uncles who didn't buy into it, but mm. other than that, uh, all my grandfather's uncles on his side, and then uh, my grandmother on my mom's side. Mm. What about your dad? Is your dad uh, and and his son uh, not? Or? Yeah, my dad, uh, his parents are in it, mm. but I don't believe that he currently is. I, I don't know. I have 
I haven't talked to him in a long time. Mm. It's I have a lot of stuff going on with him that I won't get into on this. I hear you. Yeah, I, I understand yeah. actually. But I, I all I can say on that is I totally identify with how I know you talked about your father yeah. in a couple of yeah, uh, yeah. episodes. Kind of sucks. So, but yeah, I, I'm definitely with you on that. Uh, somebody's yeah. actually asking like, is it like Comic Con convention or something else? Let me just tell you, it's it's kind of like you you rent out a big arena and there's like big seating and everything else just all over the place right and you go into the arena and it's just all jehovah's witnesses everywhere it's organized by jehovah's witnesses they will buy out the vendor locations inside the building or they did at mine anyways because they don't want mm -hmm. vendors in there that are not jehovah's witnesses and so that makes it even more expensive you got name tags that everybody wears it says Jehovah's Witness, you know, put your name on there and everything else. And you basically sit there. They have a like a schedule, a program, and they have a one day convention, a two day convention and a three day convention. It's I think it's for like the circuit and the district and the tri-state area or something like that. I don't even remember now, but I think I think the conventions are tri-state and then there were the assemblies that are the circuit. Right. So, uh, so anyways, they have like single day, two day and three day, and they have schedules and this is when people get baptized. So they'll have like hour long sermons from various people and then they'll take a break and then they'll do another sermon and they'll do like, uh, they'll do the baptisms and they'll have a drama on one of the days where they act things out or they, or they used to do that. I understand now they just play video clips or something, but yeah. It, you know, it's boring as shit for the most part, like sitting there, like falling asleep in your freaking hands because it's like hours and hours of just droning on. But, you know, you still get to see, like you said, your your extended family, you get to see your friends and you, you get to eat lunch there with like your packed lunch and everything. It's just like kind of fun in its own little weird way, I guess. I don't know. It's like a nice kind of get together. The issue is you just got to sit through eight hours plus of religious ranting all day. Yep. Yep. And, and it was always in summer and with 11,000 people in one area. Oh my dear Lord. That got so horribly yep. hot. Yep. That's why they sold like the, the fans and stuff all over the place. Yeah. I remember crafting little paper fans out of my notebook paper and stuff. God. Oh, I'm sure everyone did that. Yeah. And <laughs> At a certain age, you were expected to take notes. I don't know if you did this too, but I would sit there and take <laughs> notes. Like I, I actually learned uh, special ways of taking notes with like shorthand writing and stuff because uh, I was writing so quickly f to keep up with them and stuff. But oh yeah, um, did oh, you man, ever? Yeah. I never, uh, hmm? I never took good notes. Really? Oh my god! Um, I. <laughs> You know, a friend of mine and I actually, we, we sat up in like the, the top section, like way up in the nosebleed section, and we watched uh, Family Guy on his PSP, like one of the oh, very last man. conventions I was at. And some people <laughs> saw us and just lost it. They were like, what are you doing? You know, I know you're not spiritually strong, but you got to get, get it together and all that. It's oh, man. Yeah. It's good times. Yeah, I remember I got a... I got a talking to because one time I was talking with my cousin how we were talking about an episode of South Park. Oh, God. Yeah, that was... That's um, a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> not a good one. I never did I remember, uh, watch it, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a good show. Mm. Um, Yeah, no, I got talking to him. It's like, I mentioned it to someone I worked with and then they said they wouldn't even watch a Cheryl. This is someone of the world telling me that they okay. wouldn't do that. I was like, oh, jeez. God, that's <laughs> so bad. Um, I remember at one point I sat down, like, on the floor. Like, they had the, you know, the seats all around like oh, an yeah. arena does. But then they have the seats on the floor for, like, the handicap section. And I would sit down there with the sign language people and learn sign language. Like, somebody would sign the entire thing to people and... So that, you know, I didn't learn Spanish, oh, but I did awesome. learn sign language. Yeah, this is kind of one useful skill I got, but yeah. did you ever, like, learn Spanish or any of that? Uh, No, I took, like, a couple of weeks of Italian. I managed to gleam one whole sentence that I can still speak. Oh, you're a bad Jehovah's Witness. I can't believe you. Shame on you. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty interesting. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you coming on and talking to me again. Uh, maybe we'll see you another time, okay? Yeah, man, I always appreciate you having me. Have a great night. Yeah, you too.
Yeah, good times. I don't know. Like, the conventions were entertaining in their own way, or parts of it was entertaining, or were entertaining. But, yeah, it was still, like, super just dry and boring sitting through that stuff. But, uh, I don't know. Part of me kind of misses it. So, anyways, uh, next person on the list is Adjimico's4064. Hey, uh, are you there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I can, indeed. How's it going? Okay, I was muted myself. I was trying to get into the settings. Oh, okay, that's fine. So, uh, yeah, what's going on? Like, I, I've seen you around a little bit, but you've never been on the podcast, right? No, I have not. What religion were you originally? Are you still religious, or? So, I was baptized Methodist, okay. but I, when I went to first going to church, I was went to a church of Nazarene when I was, like, five years old. Really? I didn't know what their whole thing is they were just very strict but uh yeah i i i think the only thing i know is like i've heard that there's a thing about not that they were like they don't dance i've and, i've actually heard of them too uh in fact i think i did a video on them then, forever ago mm-hmm. yeah and then i don't even follow any of that and then of course then it went to pentecostal when i with my mother mm. And when I was 12 years old, and that was weird. You went Pentecostal, then, you say? Yes. And then, it, then when I went to school in the, in the, in the well, I had a very jump around. I even went to, like, went to, uh, stepped into a church of, I was Catholic in the Philippines when I was 14. Really? Okay. You were Catholic yeah. for how long? Not no, very no, long, no. I guess. No, no, no. I just went. I just went to church. What? Oh, okay. Went to a Catholic church. Right. Got you. That's Interesting. it. Was that the last church that you ended up going to, or did you go to more after that? So the last church I've gone to was a Methodist church when I okay. was in high school. Okay. Is that where you got and baptized? Was... Yes. Interesting. Do you still believe it? No. Okay. I'm so agnostic you're agnostic now. Okay. And I've just like, I don't know. Yeah. Just prefer to say as you know. I kind of will kind of try to live a humble life and say it's better to just say I don't know. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm with you. That's really interesting. So, do you have like memories of any kind of like? W- tell me about growing up in a religious environment. Like, what was it that kind of got you to go? To Pentecostal and then Catholic and then eventually Methodist. So, when I was in the Church of Nazarene, everything mm. was my neither of my parents were very strict about the religion, mm. and I was kind of like I just went to church on Sunday and I just memorized Bible verses, and you know everything was fine. And then my mother went to the um, started going to the Pentecostal church, and she started slamming it down me and telling me that if I you know wasn't going wasn't doing it. I was going to go to hell. Mm. And so that started being like, you know, I had dirt. She started taking my free will away from actually going to it. And yeah. then it just started pushing me away from it. And then it started just questioning, like, you know, the whole system on, like, it's all that I re- like. So it came down to when I was in the Philippines, I started seeing uh, effects of like just poverty over there and knowing that how much money it's sent by our United States government, mm-hmm. how it doesn't help anyone. And there's just political despots that have been there since the country's founding. Right. And so I just, so I started questioning all of that on the whole system of just how religion and government's all just for based on controlling everyone. Yep. And so it's just, just kind of opened up from there. Like you just kind of started to realize it from that point, I guess. So. That all of all, that all of religion, yeah, all religion is just based on control. Yep, controlling this the, uh, the populace. Yeah, and I I've definitely seen a lot of that too. Actually, I've I've talked about Methodists and I've talked about them as being reasonably moderate. It's interesting yes. that you ended up like they were very moderate. I f- I, yes, and that's another thing is they were moderate, and they like most of them went like uh, in that area though. 
became more moderate. Mm. They used to be very strict. Like, uh, but they're like had a bell choir still, but mm. the actual members of them so were very moderate. Mm -hmm. So the actual service was very like, I guess conservative, but the but the people weren't members. as much. Yes. Right. That yes. makes sense. I'm wondering what it was that kind of got you to kind of walk away well, that, from it for the most part. It was just more of everyone was just, you know, pushing it on me. Mm. Saying that if I wasn't going to do it, that, you know, it's just a whole system of control. Just, you know, that, you know, that was that uh, God, him, they say that God gave us free will. And of course, all of the systems are just trying to control everyone. Yeah. And they want, you know, and it's like, even why does, why would they, why does God need money if he's omnipotent? Right. Why does God need anything? Why does, if he's omnipotent, why do, and if, if God's omnipotent, our human, like, he created our minds, and if he's omnipotent, we wouldn't even be able to, to comprehend the fact he exists. Right. And people, it's just like, Everything contradicts itself. It does, yeah. Actually, I don't know if you've seen this before. Have you ever heard of, like, the... I think it's called the Skeptics Annotated Bible. Does that sound familiar? I've heard of it. It's pretty cool, actually. Uh, I think I talked about this last podcast, too, but there's, like, this website called bibviz.com, and it's got, like lines drawn between the verses of the Bible, like for every contradiction in the Bible. It's got like thousands and thousands. Oh, yes. of, it's insane. Uh, um, my, my girlfriend uh, was telling me about, I was, talk, was talking about this web, that website earlier. Yeah, it's super today, awesome. And sent it to someone because they sent her something on Facebook and it was like a live, po live stream of some uh, service that was going on today. Okay. Freaking religious <laughs> BS. That's pretty funny, though. That's awesome. Your girlfriend is... Uh, who's your girlfriend again? 29. Awesome. Yes, 29. Yeah, 29's been around for, like, a long time. I think she's been here on the server since, like... She said, like, over a year. Yeah, over a year. I think it's, like, February of last year or something like that. She's drawn me a lot of artwork. It's been pretty awesome, so I appreciate her coming on. And I'm glad you're here, too. That's pretty cool, too. Uh, so, anyway. Yeah, so we both... Yeah, we're both from Alaska, so. How is it there? Today it's sunny. Yesterday it was pouring rain where I'm at. Right. Uh, let me ask you this. In the area that you are in, does it, like, stay light outside for longer than usual? Or is that one of the areas in Alaska? Or Yes. Uh, well, that's that's majority of the state when summer hmm. comes. Summer what, comes around. How do you deal with that? So it, it's like... Blackout. You 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 buy blackout curtains for your windows. What is to, for your bedrooms? I assume that that means that during the winter it's dark most of the time, right? Yeah. How do you deal with the darkness? Have bright lights and. Is it hard? Yeah. Like, do you ever have have a problem with like just being in the dark all the time, like not seeing the sun? I or play anything? a lot of I play I play a lot of video games during the winter. Right, that keeps your mind during, occupied, during, I guess. And then during the summer, I just get it at super excess of sun and outdoors, mm. just because there's so much of it that it, you know there's suns up all the time. Yeah, I know I that. Um, I have, I don't know, like it, it, there have been times in the winter here where it's like dark. It gets dark at like four or five p.m. Oh no, or something I like that, you know? that's what it's saying is, and it's. Winters are hard. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I can't even imagine going through something like that. Like, I would freak out. I guess I'd have to have like lamps on all the time and stuff. It would, it would pretty. Say, I, mess I, with I, me. I sleep a lot through the winter. Mm. Hibernate. Yeah, almost. there you go. That's actually probably the best way to do it. I imagine to to try that out. But anyway, I appreciate you coming on and talking to me. It's been an interesting conversation. And I'm sure I'll see you around the server. Okay. Yep. Talk to you later. All right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've had a lot of issues with, like, sometimes I stay up until 4 in the morning working. I really get my most, I get most of my work done at night. Like, between, I usually start work around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. 
and then and I just work straight through until I'm done. Sometimes I finish at 10 p.m. Sometimes it's 2 a.m. Sometimes it's 4 a.m. And if that's the case, usually Kylie will get me up in like on the weekend in the morning at like 10:30. She'll wake me up, and um, she's like 10 now. She just does her own thing pretty much, and. So from 10.30 until like 4.30 is the only sunlight I get, and it just kind of drives me insane sometimes. It's really hard to deal with. But anyway, uh, so the, the very last person I want to get tonight was TJ Merlot. Are you there? Can you hear me? Can me? Yes, I can. How's it going? Not too bad. So we have talked before, haven't we? Yeah, there was one time I was lurking on the server, and you happened to be on, so I waited for you to pop on and sorry i waited for a bit and then we got to talking yeah that's pretty cool so just uh, of course for the audience because they don't know the information but what religion were you originally you ex jehovah's witness oh, yeah. um i've been out for oh, fuck I, I used to remember the day that i got i i got officially disfellow uh disassociated uh, in November 2017. Okay, so tell me about, like, what was the thing that got you disassociated or that, that made you realize that? Because you said disassociated, not disfellowshipped, right? So they didn't kick you out. You left. Well, yes and no. I mean, you know, I realized that it was bullshit, but mm -hmm. it was, you know, it, it was one thing to mentally detach myself from it, but it was another thing to at what was, you know, how I was feeling. Because you know how it is. If The moment you speak up against them, you're out. Yeah, I definitely know exactly what you mean. So is that what ended up happening with you, was you kind of spoke out against it and they they didn't like that? or I, I uh, confided in someone who I thought I could trust. Um, she blabbed to her parents, who mm. blabbed to my mother. And when my mum she called me and uh, when she rang me, I, I, I was done running. I, I just, you know, you can only live a life for so long, mate, you know, at yeah. some point you, you you keep running and then one day you just get tired, you run out of breath. So I thought yeah. enough's enough. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. That's the thing about this religion is that they like, they chase you down sometimes. Like they, send elders after you to figure out what you're doing they'll go knocking on your door to ask questions and stuff it's like almost creepy but you you know you put it succinctly like you're almost running is what it is and at a certain point you just don't want to hide that anymore i can totally get on board with that i i definitely know what you mean so eventually, eventually you just give up i mean fuck i and it was pretty bad for me because at the time you know being a young single male in his 20s I was a prime candidate. I knew one of the elders approached me and said, hey, we've been thinking about promoting you to be a ministerial servant. And that, I knew I knew that this train wreck was going to happen at some point. I knew this was inevitable. Right. So they were trying to, they were trying to make you a ministerial servant, huh? And you didn't believe it at the time? Fuck no, I didn't. I didn't, but I was well, mentally, I was well and truly out of the, religion by that point but i was still physically in um you know and i remember thinking you know because when you live a lie you kind of you do you do wind up thinking where the fuck does this end like how far am i going to let this go before before you, you just know, come before clean. it all falls apart yeah i could i have let this gone i mean was i going to wait till i got promoted there was i going to elder marriage with children where, where does it end yeah you know? That is so, that is such a clear glimpse into the mindset. Like, that's so fascinating. So, like, what was the thing that kind of got you to leave? What was the thing that made you realize it was BS? Oh, I'm always a bit, like, I, even as a, even as a kid, I always had an interest in, like, science and history. And um, I noticed there were inconsistencies with the, uh, with a lot of their publications, particularly the creation book and with what actual science and uh, his, or what historians would actually say on various matters and what yeah, have yeah. you. And 
because you know how it is. We were both conditioned to that out and to just trust in the governing body and in the organization. But eventually, I thought, well, if they really are right, the facts should be on my side. Right. Turns out they, as you, as you knew well, well and truly before me, you found out that that's not the case. Right. Um, have to be protected, mate. You know the the truth is. Well, that's just it. The truth is always going to be found out it in one way. Yes, that's super fascinating, man. I actually have a copy of the their old blue book. What what's it called? Uh, How did life get here by evolution or creation or something like that? Do you remember that oh, book? Fuck me, dead. Do I remember that? Yeah, book? that was the grueling read. Yes, it Ugh. was. I I actually bought a copy of it on Amazon to add to my collection of books, just because you know. It's that book. You know, Richard Dawkins actually uh, like debunked that in the atheist, or I'm sorry, in the God Delusion, in his book, The God um, Delusion. Well, what was funny was he, because he was misquoted. I, I think it was your video actually mm -hmm. that pointed out the yeah that misquotation. Yeah. Um, but I, I even remember reading through that, thinking, "Hang on, these someone in whoever wrote this book, they've gone through Richard Dawkins' book. They've gone through the." Uh, the origin of species if they can go through it and still come out as you know believing in jehovah why can't i right so yeah exactly it, so i thought i i had nothing to lose so i thought it's really genuinely fascinating to me that they actually have people who wrote that book i mean i read through it and it's almost like it seems like they knew what they were talking about, but they were like twisting it around to to be something completely different. Like they they totally misquoted people. So obviously they read the the quotes that these people said in the first place and twisted it around. How do you read these people's books and and get these quotes in the first place and still make it out of Jehovah's Witness? It genuinely blows my mind, you know? I don't. Well, I think they came at it from a biased angle because I think you and I, we genuinely had a search. Sorry, uh, we genuinely wanted to search for the truth. Yeah. So, I think they came at it thinking, instead of thinking, how can I learn something? They thought, how can I continue to prove that? I mean, it, you know, you've got it with, especially when you're in such a high level like they would be. Yeah. So. I yeah that that's the only explanation I could I could have. That's um, pretty true. Um, but by, by the way, on another note, you don't watch Lloyd Evans' channel, do you? Did you hear about the whole Bottlegate situation? <laughs> yeah, I, I, and it, the thing was, I'm pretty sure that was released on April first, and I remember thinking, "Fuck off, this is right? a joke." But no, nope, that's him. That's t and, and the <laughs> best is. thing was, it was of all people to happen to, it was the most pretentious yep. fucking. I just member of that group. I was just, I, 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 just I, I haven't laughed so hard in a long time. I, oh, that was I know it was awesome. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> For people who don't know, basically the, a member of the governing body, Tony Morris, the biggest sack of shit on the governing body, in my opinion, was found in a liquor store buying like $850 worth of like top shelf liquor or something like that. Uh, it was, it was top shelf it was top shelf whiskey and he was busted loading that into his Cadillac mm. but what was even funnier was that the liquor store that he was buying from that was a good 20 odd minutes away from their uh, headquarters Warwick, uh, headquarters yeah, yeah. It, it was so he went and this was at 11 in the morning on a Sunday so he went that's that's a pretty long drive at 11 a.m. on a Sunday. I mean, especially for a, you know, high and mighty governing body member. And he was pro I imagine he was supposed to be in a meeting. Like, I know my meetings were always 10 a.m. to noon on Sunday. I'm surprised. Maybe he did it at, during the meeting times on purpose so he wouldn't be spotted by a Jehovah's Witness or something. I don't know. Well, that is one very plausible idea. Um, having said that, though, uh, unlucky for him that the per that someone who happened to be an ex Jehovah's Witness spotted him and filmed him. I mean, I know. yeah, I mean, because that, that's the only problem with those guys is that they 
uh, in a celebrity status. They yep. are recognized, and especially Tony, he's recognized by his face and by his voice. He's got yep. a very distinctive voice about him. So he's he can't hide from something like, if I showed that to a Jehovah's Witness, assuming they'd bother to watch, they wouldn't be able to deny it. Right? I mean, being, it's just right out you there. Know, yeah. It, it is blatantly there for everyone to see. And it, even if we were to ridiculously assume that he was buying liquor for several other people and not just himself, is that a really good look for, you know, oh what is meant God, to be? Oh, my God, it's so bad. Well, well, here's the thing. And for those of you who aren't, for those who don't know, the governing body, they're more than just the someone higher up we are meant to look at them as angels walking on earth yeah because that's what, kind of what they are they're one of the hundred forty four thousand, and they are passing i mean they're prophets basically they're passing instructions down from jehovah to us right that's how it's perceived it's meant yeah. to be like this spiritual trickle down effect yeah and we're meant to get it all from these guys you know mr don't wear tie pants and all oh and don't donate your don't spend 50 cents on an ice cream because I need it for my liquor fund. Right? It's, oh, yeah. man. Like, the, I think the, the thing that gets me the most about Tony Morris is the fact that he wasn't a Jehovah's Witness from the start. He joined later, but he was in, he was in Vietnam, like a medic in the Vietnam War, and he talks about, in some of his talks, he talks about, like, seeing humans like burning like he said something like they look like have you ever been cooking a hot dog on a grill and it splits open well that's what it's going to be like in armageddon for people have you ever seen a deer mangled on the side of the road you think that's disturbing just wait until you see humans like that i was like holy shit this dude i cannot believe he's saying this in front of like all of these people it's mind-blowing but to be f well, to be fair, he was probably a little bit. Anyone that went to Vietnam, you know, medic or soldier, yeah. was a li came back a little bit fucked. Up, oh, they so. did. They totally did. Yeah. It's still Seems like this is the kind of headspace this guy is in, though. You know, it's well, like disturbing. But, yeah, and the way he talks about it, it's almost like he is uh, just itching for, as Christopher Hitchens referred to, as the ultimate final solution because mm. that's what it is that's what armageddon is and they can't wait for it they are just so keen to see all of these people all these quote-unquote wicked people getting slaughtered in the yep. masses yeah in fact they're they're the ones that are going to do it like the governing body members because they're anointed so anointed people are supposed to be raptured to heaven given a sword and then sent on their way to start murdering people who aren't jehovah's witnesses so they're kind of excited for that almost, you know? How's this for a disturbing thought? Imagine if the guy, imagine if it does happen and the one that happens to kill you is Stephen Lett and he has that massive grin on his oh, face God. that he always has. What a dark. creep, yeah. man. What a, oh, that'd be a horrifying thing to look at just before you die. Well, it's like, I don't know if you've seen, I was just looking at like John Cedar, or I'm sorry, Lloyd Evans' Teespring the other day, and he has a shirt that says Young Wands, because that's kind of Stephen Lett's thing. You know, he says Young Wands. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah. Like, he's got some clever shirts, man. I'm kind of jealous I didn't come up with that stuff. But... <laughs> Oh, hang on, oh, there, there was one uh, that I saw ages ago. Well, not a shirt, but like there was a quote that Gerrit Loach mm. said. Um, he said in a deposition about uh, about him that the Watchtower doesn't control me or any, or oh, any yeah. shit like that. It was, it was something like that. Have you seen that? Yes, I have seen that. It was something like... There's an idea for a print. Yeah, that is a good idea. He said some. You know, I should probably write that down. I think he said something like... Um, they split Watchtower Society and Christian Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses into two different groups, and then they put, like, the... in with the uh, Watchtower Society, and then the governing body members basically disconnected themselves from the Watchtower Society so that they couldn't be compelled to turn records over, and the court just saw straight through it when he said... The Watchtower Society doesn't control me and all of that. They saw straight through it, and they were like, we're, I'm sorry, we're court ordering you to come anyways. I don't give a shit. It's pretty funny. 
it could you could use that as a print because you know in that context for us it's uh well you know we're not controlled in another way um right although i found it funny in one broadcast garrett lodge did say you know to be aware of what's on the internet you know uh -huh. it might be a misquotation and shit like that but it's like well okay even with that in mind how can you sit there and say that with a straight face given that the creation book has been not only debunked but shown where you guys have been quote mining yep at a ridiculous uh scale yeah i mean I, the lack of self-awareness on that guy it just pisses me off i know i know me too i would seriously i don't know i just love doing videos on jehovah's witnesses it's like one of my favorite subjects but i feel like i've been focusing in on them too much so i'm trying to kind of go to other subjects but that's always going to be my base jehovah's witness videos you know gotta love that stuff. what we it's what we know best, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. We we grew up with that. We know at first hand how scarring it all is, you know. And you know, and we also know the nitty gritty too, you know, the day to day life of a business and the very process that's involved in being uh, you know, kicked out of the organization and the shunning that comes from it. Yep. So and it's I something mean, it's, that you you can't really get like I, I was never a mormon and as a result i don't really get mormon culture like i do jehovah's witness culture you know well i mean that's like um uh, my therapist for instance he's from iran and uh he doesn't understand jehovah's witnesses because he well he never was one and didn't have so much to do with them but yeah. in his country he grew up with predominantly muslims so right. that's the thing that he's more familiar with he's been helpful towards me but that's you know it, it's basically you're more of an expert in what you grew up with yeah, so you know, sure. that, that can't be helped so, so don't worry about so don't worry about right yeah that's always my base i'll always go back to that but anyway we are 10 minutes over i appreciate you talking to me it's been super interesting uh i'm sure i'll talk to you around though okay oh i'll speak to you again sometime mate yep later on a super interesting conversation. It's kind of a shame that I had to bring it to an end, but ugh, I gotta, I gotta get some work done. It, it's really cool talking to another extra of his witness, though. It's been cool talking to all of you guys. But uh, anyway, yeah, appreciate you guys coming on and talking to me once again, and I will see you next week. No, wait a minute, wait, wait. No, I'm not gonna see you next week. I'm going to be at a conference next week. I will see you. I will see you possibly on that Wednesday. I don't know. I'll, I'll keep you guys updated. Talk to you soon.